Hi, so today I'm here to discuss the passive transport and methods that this type of transport uses to move substances across a cell barrier. Passive transport is defined as the movement of substances across a cell membrane without the expenditure of energy. This means that unlike active transport, which requires ATP to move substances, passive transport does not. Instead, passive transport depends on the permeability of the cell um, while these cells naturally move down their concentration gradient. So the concentration gradient is described as a region where concentration of substances changes. So in passive transport, substances move from areas of high concentration to areas of low concentration in order to balance out the cell. As I mentioned, there are several types of passive transport, four to be exact. So why don't we get talking about number one? The first method of passive transport is called diffusion. Diffusion occurs when a substance moves down its concentration gradient in and through the plasma membrane. Each substance has its own concentration gradient, so that means that depending on the concentration outside the cell versus inside, these substances will diffuse at different rates. They will be moving through the membrane over a period of time until a balance has been achieved both inside and outside of the cell. Facilitated diffusion is like the diffusion I mentioned before, except that because of the charge of these substances trying to pass through, they must have assistance. This assistance comes by way of what are called carrier proteins and channel proteins. So both channel and carrier proteins create specific openings or passageways for these substances to move through, otherwise they can't get in. So um, for instance, if you are in the airport and you're in line and that line breaks off into multiple lines where you're going through the kiosk and getting through security, then you see a child that comes up and they are flying alone. And so they have a specific way that they have to go through security. They're not traveling by themselves. They're being assisted in a different line um, by one of the airport staff. This is a type of way that could explain facilitated diffusion versus regular diffusion, where we're all going through, no problem, and then the child would not be able to go through the way that we are. They have to have a specific way to go through. So the third uh, method of tra passive transport is called filtration. So filtration is when substances are passing through the cell membrane, but due to the size of the membrane's pores, only certain size molecules can get through. So a common example of this would be making coffee. The coffee is in the filter, water drips down into the filter. The coffee grounds are representative of um, large molecules that cannot pass through the filter, yet the flavor, the water, and the caffeine all are small enough to pass through and make your delicious cup of coffee. The fourth and final method of passive transport is called osmosis. Osmosis refers to the process of only water moving in and out of a cell. So in order for cells to survive, the ion concentrations have to be balanced on both sides of the cell membrane. The way these concentrations remain balanced during osmosis is when the water is moving in or out depending on where the highest concentration of solutes is located. So a way that would describe this would be if you were to take raisins and place them in a glass of water. The raisins are dehydrated. The concentration of solutes is higher in the raisin and therefore the water from outside of the cell slash raisin moves into the raisin and will cause it to plump up. So these are the four methods of passive transport.